Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Knights of Library. I am Ryan Knight. And I am Bo Knight. And we want to wish everyone a happy holidays, Merry Christmas, whatever else you celebrate. And Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. I'm sure there's that's right. more. Oh, there's probably tons more. And whatever it is you're celebrating, that's great. And we want to wish you a happy one of those. Um, and... For our uh, sort of Christmas special, if you will, uh, we are going to be taking a look at It's a Wonderful Wife. That's W-I-F-E, not life, like the movie I'm sure everybody knows. So I don't know if everybody knows that. I think we know that. Well, Because I've maybe. asked people like, if it's like a Christmas tradition to watch that, and I haven't, and nobody, people usually don't know what I'm talking about. At least people really? my age. Oh, well, okay, yeah. That movie's pretty old, so. Um, but this book is not. So this book, It's a Wonderful Wife, came out uh, in 2020, and it's written by Camille Pagan, and it's narrated by Amy McFadden. Um, <clears throat> uh, we listened to this on Audible, and it is free on Audible uh, with your Prime membership. I don't know if it will stay that way, but currently that it is right now. I think it is. I think it's like an actual Audible original. It is, and yeah, most of those have been have been staying free now right. with the new system. So let's get into this one. So I would say, so like Camille Pagan, I think she's known for kind of writing these like sort of like this. Uh, books like a uh, romantic fiction type of thing, but I don't really know. I don't know any of her other work. Looks like she has about seven books on Audible. People could purchase. So, hmm. um, so oh, let's see. Sad. With that, uh, this one's pretty short. It comes in right under two hours, so a pretty short story. Yeah, it's super duper short. I feel I picked that one on purpose. Yeah. Yeah, to let everybody know I picked this one just completely at random. I'm usually not a big fan of like any Christmas media stuff. I don't know why. I guess I'm just a, a Grinch. Except for that movie. That movie's actually good. <laughs> but yeah, I usually don't like Christmas stuff, so I just picked one at random and this is the one I landed on. And I honestly picked it because I thought it said it's a wonderful life. <laughs> yeah. We went back and forth on that quite a bit because you kept saying it's a wonderful life. And I was like, that's not what no, it I says. No, I didn't. I texted you wife. <laughs> you texted me life. I'm 99% sure. <laughs> Either way. I don't think so. I know we went back and forth on it because you you texted me it's a wonderful life. And I was like, I don't see that on here because I kept looking for it's a wonderful life and I couldn't find it. Um, Either way, I, I wanted to do it's uh, a Christmas carol. Which, for anybody wondering, is also free. And there's also, like, 35 different versions to choose from, I think. So. Yeah, I, I did text you wife, by the way, in the first text. Okay. I breathe in. Because um. I, I was confused, too. I, like, pulled it up on my phone, and I was like, I don't see It's a Wonderful Life. But, yeah, so this is supposed to be based on that. But it, I don't know. I guess I don't know the movie well enough to even say. Yeah, so is it... I guess we could talk about it a little bit once we get past the spoiler wall. Because I don't feel like it is based... I mean, I guess that they share a kind of similar plot. You know, kind of. Um, so what did you think about Amy McFadden as the narrator? I think she's fine. It's okay. I thought she, I thought she did pretty good, actually. I thought thought yeah she was fine like i don't think she she didn't take away from the story at all that's for sure yeah and yeah i mean yeah i think she did fine like with what she, like she does a decent job of like doing different characters and mm -hmm. doing a pretty good job of like who's talking yeah i thought so 
Um, so what would you call the genre of this book? Uh, weirdly enough, in the categories on Audible, it says it's under anthologies and short stories, which is weird. Huh. Because it's definitely... It's... It, it itself is a short story, but my idea of an anthology would be a collection of short stories in one book. Yeah, why is it an anthology? I, that doesn't really yeah, make sense. It's like a... It's like a slice of life slash time travel kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, it's got a little bit of that in it. I mean, it's it's just kind of a like a f- fiction story, basically. A fiction Christmas story, so. Yeah. Um, but Christmas isn't like a genre, is it? I don't think so. It takes place around Christmas time. How about that? Um, yeah, I mean, because oh, I was I was kind of wondering because like I feel like that when something is it's like set at Christmas time, I feel like there's a lot of stuff you kind of expect. Sure. Well, this this story kind of pivots around Christmas is the only I mean, that's like the only part about it. So. Um, so what do you think? Easy to follow? Yeah, super easy. <clears throat> I agree. I thought it was super easy to follow and I thought it was very, very easy to listen to. I thought it was a. Uh, that is pretty well yeah, done. And it, it's really short, so it goes by quick. Yeah, definitely. Um, so we want to go into recommendations for this one? Uh, yeah, you go ahead. Go first. Okay. Um, I I liked this one, actually. I really? This was okay. A, I did. I I even laughed out loud once during it, which is a surprise for me. Um. Yeah, I, I I like this one, and I think um, for a short kind of Christmassy story, I thought that it did a, I thought it told a pretty decent story in the amount of time it was given. Like a, you know, I thought it was good. I I don't wouldn't say I liked it. I don't think this is something I would really ever want to listen to, like on my <laughs> own. And I don't know if that's just like the Christmas part of it, but like I feel like the story doesn't really make a lot of sense. And I don't know. I didn't. I didn't really enjoy this one a whole lot. Really? I, I mean, I thought it was pretty good for what it is. Um, without getting, hopefully, without getting, you know, shouted down. If if I could say this for a book, this is sort of like a chick flick type book. I mean, I think. Right. I mean, I think that's sort of the target for this one is that it's you know the lead character is a female and she's dealing with some things like like. Uh, problems with her husband and and you know uh maybe falling in love with another man like types of things that you know are normally in like a chick flick type of story so yeah it is it is very like what's that called like light the lifetime network i feel like this is where this belongs yeah that's i think so i think that's a fair assessment of it um but I thought it, I thought it was good. So I guess there you go. Anybody who's who's wondering, you pretty much got split decision here. I think it's good, and I would recommend it because of how short it is. It's free, and I think it's a pretty decent. You know, kind of feel good story. Um, it gets pretty depressing pretty quickly early on, but I think it turns around okay. So, and I guess we'll get into it. But that's like my main issue with it. <laughs> okay well with that we'll go ahead and pass the spoiler wall real quick and we'll just kind of talk about the story so uh for anybody who doesn't want it spoiled yet go ahead and go listen to it and then come back and hear what we have to say about it so yeah it's a wonderful wife is about i don't what's her name i can't remember bailey yeah miss bailey she owns a cannery like that her parents died and left her and this, like, it's picking up, like, right before they are sending everybody home from work for Christmas break, basically. For two weeks. And, they shut down yeah. for two weeks, which is pretty impressive. <laughs> that is a long time. And, like, almost immediately, Bailey gets, a, like, news that her aunt had basically, like, embezzled a bunch of money, right? And lost, like, 200000 Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I... I, I, I st- don't quite understand what her aunt did like she took the money this is is like this is immediately i'm like wait a minute what like how did she have access to so 
And they do kind of explain this away, but it's like, how does she have access to so much money so quickly without her noticing? It's like the thing that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, like that's a lot of money to just be throwing around. I don't care who you are. Exactly. Yeah, so her aunt losing all this money basically puts Bailey in a situation where she probably won't even be able to make the final payroll of the year for all her employees, which basically means she'll have to shut her cannery down. Um, which right, is a huge deal is because basically like go ahead. Oh, I was just probably going to say the same thing you were. It's a big deal because the cannery employs most of the town they live in. Okay, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Is like the cannery is like the lifeblood of like this tiny town that's basically all that's there. And most of the people who live in the town work at the cannery. Right. And it's got that very like, I think that's what she was trying to build when she kind of built this idea is that the town is very like, it's small to the point where, you know, most people like grow up there and then they go work like at this cannery. Like they don't most people don't leave the town. Right. Um, so then shortly after uh, Bailey gets this news, she calls her best friend and gets a has a weird conversation with her best friend on the phone. So then she leaves to head home early because now she's all depressed and we get a little bit of background like a little bit of inner monologue she's talking about like kind of basically how shitty her husband is it sounds like um and i didn't understand like why did he not have a job or did he have a job i didn't really get it so like, no he, he doesn't so lazy? he doesn't have a job because his uh what was it his dad or something died and left him and his brother like a huge inheritance Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Um, so her husband doesn't work. He's like a, he just kind of hangs out at the house and doesn't really do anything because he has all this money stashed away in an account that she doesn't have access to, <laughs> which is super bizarre. Um, it is kind of bizarre. They've been married a long time, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause they're, they were like high school sweethearts and got married like right out of high school. Um, but her, his brother um, is her neighbor. This will come up a little bit later. But his brother is her neighbor, like right next door. And he works at the cannery because he blew all the money in his inheritance on like gambling. Right. And uh, he's like a piece of shit, too. Like, I don't know. It's really like not painting. It really kind of paints everybody but her with this brush stroke of like, they're bad people. <laughs> like, and, and dude, that's another issue I have with this. It's like, okay, why, why was she so like happily married to this man? If he sucks. Yeah. For a long time. I don't know, man. And it I, I it mean, didn't really make sense. I feel like it didn't make sense. That might not be an uncommon thing for people who like get married right out of high school and don't know anything different. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, okay. I guess. So either way, this poor girl Bailey at this point, we find out that she has a little bit of inner talk, you know, about – oh, and I forgot to mention it's almost – what is this? Like the day before Christmas Eve or it is Christmas Eve, right? I, I think it is Christmas Eve. <laughs> I think it is Christmas Eve because this is also the anniversary of her parents' death. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> every, it's like literally so, the worst day ever. Right, and uh, her parents died in like a car accident uh, a long time ago, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty messed up. So now she, it's like a scar on her Christmas Eve every year. Um, so at this point in the story, you're wondering, you're like, man, how could this get any worse for this poor Bailey girl? Uh, well, and it, it can. <laughs> yeah. Um, so she comes home and she finds uh, her best friend and her husband having sex. So. You're like, yeah, oh, and she okay. sprays them with a fire extinguisher, which I thought was hilarious. I thought that was funny. I mean, it's pretty funny. I mean, yeah, I thought that was pretty good. So now you're really like, damn, this girl's this girl's life is just jacked. Um, so, yeah, then Bailey, like, immediately goes to, like, the local bar, right? And just gets tanked. Yeah. yeah, she gets, like, wasted. Um, and then she meets this guy. I can't remember his name now off the top of my head. Um, I'm not going to be able to help you. <laughs> no. So she meets this guy that was uh, she went to school with. Uh, she didn't 
really know him very well. Um, yeah, which is another huge issue I take with this story. A bit, yeah. Like, there's... It's like, the end of it is, like, way too neat. It makes no sense. I agree. But, we'll, yeah, we'll talk about that when we get there. Um, <clears throat> so, anyway, him and her start kind of chatting it up, you know, getting, you know, uh, talking to each other and whatnot. And he's, he's kind of trying, like, they kind of try to, like, make it seem like maybe he's being kind of sleazy by, like, asking her if she wants to leave the bar but apparently he's he is just the the uh you know a knight in shining armor if you will and can do no wrong we'll find out um so he ends up uh she like leaves the bar right and she just is like wandering around drunk because she doesn't know what else to do at this point because she's got to close her basically her life is ruined is is what's going on um, he ends up picking her up and taking her to his house and being like, look, I just want to make sure you're safe. You sleep on my couch, please. <clears throat> and she, right. uh, and then, go ahead. Uh, did she, she like, doesn't she, she like talks to him for a minute and like before she goes to bed, doesn't she like wish she'd never been born? Yes, correct. <clears throat> and then, so she ends up, this is where I think the very... Because if I remember right in It's a Wonderful Life, which is mentioned in this book in the beginning, by the way. So it obviously draws a lot of inspiration from that movie. Um, she, I think this is kind of where the it kind of ties together. Because in a, It's a Wonderful Life, isn't it? A, isn't he going to kill himself or something like that? And then he's shown yeah. like everything that would have happened if he killed himself. Yeah. So yeah, like I think he actually does like for, like jump off the bridge, doesn't he? And the angel guy stops him and like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but like it it makes a lot more sense in that movie because like there had been no weird anything until this point. Correct. Um. <clears throat> so then she wakes up. And this dude's house that she's at, it looks completely different. Like, he had, like, moving boxes and stuff everywhere because he was, like, just moving back to town. Um, But now none of that's there. So she goes and she leaves, and she's walking home because her car is still at the bar, and the bartender has her keys. Um, So when she's walking back, she walks, like, past her cannery, right? And it's like run down and like the windows are broken and the sign is gone off of it. Right. So she thinks she's like, wow, word must've got out to my uh, employees and they already ruined the place. Um, But outside is a lady who works at the cannery begging for money, which this part really pissed me off. Um, Just cause I, <laughs> the lady's like, if you have money, I have stories for you. And she yeah, gives her, what? Yeah, and then she gives her money like it's a fucking like she just puts a quarter in a machine. But then yeah, the lady's like, like a freaking fortune teller machine. Like wh- who acts like that? Nobody. No. Yeah, but then she gives the lady money, and the lady's like, "Nope, I'm all out of stories for the day." <laughs> what? It's like what? It's the dumbest um, thing ever. But the way this lady acts is she acts like she's never met Bailey before. So right. we, as the listener, already kind of understand what's going on. But Bailey obviously has no idea. Um, yeah, which I mean makes sense. You wouldn't really, I would, you would have no idea what's going on. And the only reason right. I even kind of knew is because I figured this had like something to do with it's a wonderful life, how that played out. I agree. And I think if it had been named something different, I might have been like, <laughs> wait, what is going on now? Like, but yeah, it kind of, I feel, played, I feel it like it if it was a... named something different, the story would make a lot less sense. Well, maybe. Um, so basically she kind of goes through town and has this same like interaction with a bunch of people like that. Uh, nobody knows who she is like n- at all. Uh, she and ends the up town going is like pretty much overall much worse. Yeah. The whole town is pretty much kind of run down. So she ends up going like uh, to her house and finds out that her former, like her husband is like married to her sister, which I thought was so weird. Like it didn't make any sense. Um, right. But she's more worried he, about like her sister's kids, right? Her, it, it's her, her brother. It's, it's her, 
it's her her brother husband's in law. brother's kids. Yeah, correct. Yeah, her husband's law. brother's kids. Yeah, which in the beginning we find out she kind of looks after them because her, her brother in law is a piece of shit. Like like I said, like most people who surround her apparently in this story. Um, but it, it's kind of like side like barely mentioned a little bit. It's like I don't know. I feel like it wasn't. I didn't get the vibe that she was like their mother, basically. Correct. I agree. Uh, we find out that in this kind of timeline, the kids live at a foster home. She goes to this foster house and like foster parents are mistreating the kids, apparently, like beating them and, and making them well, stay outside out, in the cold all day. Yeah, they're outside on like a freaking 20 degree day. Yeah, she specifically says 20 degrees, and I'm like, that's weird, because I'm pretty sure if you stayed outside that long in 20 degrees, you might die. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, so then she ends up uh, basically kind of by the end of this little jaunt that she goes through, she kind of has this realization that maybe her life wasn't uh, as bad as she was, pain- was, you know, making it out to be in the beginning of the story. Uh, so... Yeah, doesn't she end up like? I don't even remember how she gets back to where she was on the couch. She says some phrase, and I can't remember it because it's not really noteworthy and made no sense to me. <laughs> I feel like she was just saying something pretty normal. I can't remember what it yeah, was. I can't either. But yeah, some somehow she ends up back on the couch, but it's like the next morning, and so she's like super hungover because she's back now, like in the real in the reality. Um. So basically she had like this revelation of what what life would have been like for everybody else if she hadn't been born. Um, and yeah, we apparently life is like great because she exists is kind of what we're led to believe. So, well, at least for the town it's true. a little better, right? Yeah, but it sucks for her sister cuz now her sister's not a doctor, she's a freaking She's kind of like a... Oh, yeah, that's she, that's true. Her sister, her adult sister, literally says stranger danger when she comes in the house. Like, I'm yeah, like, oh, so really her sister weird. is like... Yeah, <laughs> that part was weird. <laughs> um, I didn't think about that. Yeah. I, at first I was like, wait, so what happened to her sister? Like, because ne- she was she But was I a took doctor. that like they were... I thought they were like messed up on drugs. And that's very possible that that's exactly... You're probably right. Um, I think you're actually exactly right. So, um, yeah. So either way, she uh, she wakes up, and then she finds out that the dude, right? That the oh yeah, because she meets the dude uh, the, whose house she's at in the the alternative timeline, and finds out that he uh, he moved to California to start like a distillery. Um, Well, come to find out in reality, that's true. And he moved back to the town because he wanted to make a deal with her cannery to put his distillery. All all of this that you just explained is said in less words. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I think you're right. (laughs) But it it felt so convenient. She's like, man, frick, the cannery screwed. And he's like, actually, I'm going to make it a distillery. It's like, what? Where did that come from? Yeah, I I agree. It, it, and we also come to find out. So, like, basically, long story short, uh, to sum it up, she ends up going to her husband and saying, hey, you need to give me the two hundred thousand dollar loan out of your savings because I have to pay back all my empl- I have to pay all my employees. And then that's when uh, that dude is like, yeah, and I'm going to open up my distillery and part of your cannery and pay you a bunch of money um so it it like puts like the perfect perfectly wrapped little bow on top because she also leaves her husband and like immediately starts seeing this other this other dude so which he says i've been in love with you for years and she doesn't even remember this guy exactly yeah because that's some like (laughs) freaking fedora neckbeard kind of stuff we I don't really well understand and, it. I feel like it makes no sense. Well, yeah, because we find out that really, like the one interaction that he had with her in school is her husband and his buddies were picking on this guy, and she told them to leave him alone. And 
this guy remembered that like his whole life. It's like 20 years later, mind you. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're like in their forties. Yeah. And yeah, it really does have like a very like super like, who duper is this guy. I, I, yeah. <laughs> to me, you could easily flip this into like a great horror story where she's like, yeah, Dude, he's been so nice. Thinking. It's, it's like, great. <laughs> it's like, how, how is this Mr. Convenient? just happens to show up and save the day perfectly like oh, yeah. i don't know yeah like yeah. It, it definitely could be a horror story oh i'm making a distillery where he's just cutting people up yeah or he like <sighs> archie shh stop it um he uh hang on you just you're fine say something hang on i mean i don't know i just want to be really uh, I, I can't i'm i'm really surprised I know Ryan can't, I probably can't hear me, but I'm really surprised that Ryan enjoyed this story. Like, I don't know. I guess this is part of the stuff I don't like about Christmas stories, that it just has to be so neat and so tidy and everything at the end of the day has to be okay. Because it, like, set up this, like, devastating beginning of, like, everything is going wrong for poor Bailey. And you, like, feel for her. And I, I remember when she came back, I was like, man, she's still kind of, she owes them, like, all that money and like her husband was cheating on her, but like everything ended up being okay anyway. So like <laughs> the fact of raising the stakes, like it did at the beginning, didn't mean anything. Right. Yeah. It, like I said, it's almost too perfect of a bow at the end to, to tie it all back together. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's like my main issue with this. It's like, yeah. Like if, I, I can see the appeal of this book. If like, if you're not, if you feel like your life's in a really bad place, and you like want to listen to something that will like, make you happy at the end of the day. I get that. But I feel like the, the plot kind of suffers for that. And I, I kind of wish it was longer because I feel like there wasn't really a lot of character development. <clears throat> like, well, we, we get to know I Bailey mean... a little bit, but we like we don't get to know anything about like her husband, really, other than what she thinks about him. Right. And, Which like, apparently he is just a huge piece of shit. Right, and so I I don't understand why she's like so devastated that he was cheating on her. Then, like, I don't know. It just like if, if everything's gonna go wrong, but you can fix it in a couple hours. Like, why did every why did everything have to go wrong? Yeah, and I mean it's a it's a pretty short book. So to be fair, I mean it's it it has to kind of take you from beginning to end in a very short amount of time. This could have been stretched out, but it almost follows the same beats as the movie. Cause I think the movie is about the exact same amount of time. So I think the movie might be a little longer. Right. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I mean, I agree. But it's the movie actually talks perfect, about but... like they, they, they talk about like why he's getting like taken back and shown like why when he like what would happen if he wasn't around and that doesn't right. like it doesn't get explained at all in the book it doesn't even bring it up really it's like oh yeah that, that happened i guess what, so, was it like a dream like what <laughs> yeah i don't know i'd like to see a horror story part of the second you know a second book that's the horror story side of it where she the guy she fell in love with now after it's this it's called a wonderful she, knife yeah see it's a wonderful knife and that's because uh she goes to like this guy's house and finds out he's just been like he knows who she is because for the past 20 years he's just been stalking her this whole time like waiting for his moment well, to <laughs> it would be even creepier if he in. wasn't who he said he was because he got plastic surgery he says right yeah yeah guy. yeah yeah see that'd be uh there you go <laughs> And we find out that she only had her weird like trip back in time because he drugged her that night. That yeah, she he gave her like a bunch her. of ayahuasca or something. <laughs> <laughs> See, shit, she is a right to sell. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then he sets up a pretty good story. You know, that would make a lot of sense. Why like the <laughs> plot holes make no sense? Because she didn't actually know what was going on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because she was freaking just tripping out. <laughs> All right. Well. Before we uh, take everybody's Christmas spirit away, I guess we could go ahead and wrap this one up. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a bit of a Grinch on this one. Yeah. I mean, like I said, I think if for a quick little short kind of feel good wrap up at the end, I thought it was all right. So. Yeah, 
You can't really listen to it with your kids, I guess. Never mind. I was going to say you could, but you can't. Uh, nah, probably not. <clears throat> um, so with that, uh, this will probably be our last episode of the year, most likely. I mean, I, I, we might be able to get another one out maybe before the end of the year. Um, we we'll just kind sure of Abraham try. We we can sure as Abraham try. Um, yeah. Uh, and with that, if anybody wants to send us some kind of year end wrap up stuff, we'd love to hear it. Uh, kotpl.pod at gmail.com. You guys can uh, email us about anything and everything you want, and we'd love to hear from you. Yeah, you can tell us Merry Christmas. You can tell us to go kill ourselves. Whatever you want. <laughs> Whatever you feel like. Yeah, whatever you feel like. So, yeah. With that, we hope to catch everybody in the next one.